Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be watching this feed at this present time. I am student clergy J. Quincy Norman Jr. from Unity Fellowship, Charleston, South Carolina. We welcome you to our morning service. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for joining with us. Um, I am here this morning giving the message to you because our pastor, Reverend Robin Arrington, was actually going to be giving a message uh, later on today for our church in Los Angeles, California. So if you want to join in at that time to hear Reverend Robin Arrington, you could join him later on today. But for now, I would like to give you the message today. So welcome you into this space. We welcome you into this room. We welcome you once again for joining us at Unity Fellowship, Charleston, South Carolina, Sunday worship service. First, we'll start off with a prayer, and then I'm going to go into any brief announcements that we may have, and then I will go into giving the message that God gave to me to share to you on this day. Gracious God, we thank you once again for giving us the opportunity, the mind, and the thought to sign on and come into this room so we can worship together, so we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Praise God, we ask you to cover the speaker this morning, dear God. We ask you, Lord, to pour into me, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to speak through me. Hide student clergy Quincy behind the cross and come in front and speak through me so people can hear you, so people can hear the message, so it can resonate in their soul and their spirit and their mind, so they can take it on their daily lives and use it and apply it in their daily lives. Praise God, we thank you for those who were able to join us today. We thank you for those who's able to listen to this feed later on today, this week, next week, next year, wherever they decide to listen to this message. We thank you for that. Praise God, we ask you to please bless each and every one that's here, that's listening, at this present time, we ask you to please watch over them in their lives and their workplace as they go to or from today, for whatever function they're going through throughout the week. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to build their confidence. We ask you to build their encouragement. We, we thank you for everything you have done and everything that you're about to do. In your precious name, we pray through grace. Ashe, so it is. And once again, thank you. Thank you for joining us. So some quick announcements here. So next month is September. So we'll be back again on our first Sunday, which is Communion Sunday. And <clears throat> next month, you'll get to experience Sunday worship with yours truly, student clergy Quincy. So once again, our pastor, Reverend Robin Arrington, will be giving message with our Los Angeles church over in J1. So we ask you to please sign on in starting the first Sunday in September and come worship with us here at Unity Fellowship Charleston with yours truly student clergy Quincy. And then later on, if you really enjoyed the message that God gave to me to share to you. We ask you to sign back on later on today and listen to our truly, our pastor, yours truly pastor, Reverend Robert Arrington, Unity Fellowship Charleston pastor. And he has a message that he wants to give later on with Jurisdiction One. Um, we also have our convocation 2023 is in full effect. And guess what? You still can register. There's still time. So we ask you to please sign on to our website, 
which is www.ufccharlestonsc.org. And you could go under um, events and go ahead and sign up. There's a QR code. You can scan the QR code if you're tech savvy, or you could click the link and go in and register for convocation. So that's all the announcements that we have for you today. And this is the time where we can just settle ourselves. We ask you to clear your mind. We ask you to relax. Anything that may have happened this morning that kind of try to throw you off track, we want you to kind of center yourself. I need you to give me that energy that God can use me in a way that it could be effective to you that are watching here in, in, in Charleston and beyond. And we thank you for this time. So this time we're going to go into the word and the message that God has given me today. And um, speaking of the message and the word that God has given me today, I sat and I thought, what am I going to share, God? What is it that you want me to talk to your children about? And it's funny, I mentioned that, that Convocation 2023 is still in full effect, and you can go ahead and register. And what popped in my head was the theme for Convocation this year, which is privileged. And I sat and I thought about the word privileged, and usually when people use the word privilege, we're using it as in present tense, which is privilege. And I don't know if anybody picked up the differences between the two. A lot of people use the word privilege instead of privileged. And our theme this year is privileged, which is in past tense. So the thought for a title today is privilege versus privileged. Once again, like I said, privilege is present tense that we usually use all the time. And privileged is in past tense. And the text that I'll be coming from or the text that you can read is um, Genesis, the second chapter. And I also read Galatians 2 and 20. Okay. So I'm not going to go into reading Genesis, the second chapter, because that is a lot to read. But in your spare time, please go ahead and go into that Bible, read Genesis, the second chapter, and you can ponder on something, or you can try to relate to the message that is given today. So let me break down the definitions between the two. So privilege which is used in present tense. It means a special right, advantage, or immunity granted or available only to a particular person or a group. Then we have privileged, which is, which is in past tense, which means having special rights advantages, or immunities. See, the difference between the two is having privilege means having an advantage that is out of your control. And it's something that you didn't ask for. You may not even have noticed this privilege until you decided to educate yourself about its existence. Whereas privileged is defined as having special rights, advantages, and immunities, which too often is interchanged with the word entitled. So I said, okay, let, let me see why it's privileged interchanged with the word entitled. So I decided to look up the word entitled. And the definition, definition, excuse me, 
is as follows. Believing oneself to be inherently deserving of special treatments. I'm going to read that one more time. When I looked up the definition, entitled is defined as believing oneself to be inherently deserving of special treatments. So let's look back at the story of Adam and Eve. So when you go to read Genesis, the second chapter, it speaks all about Adam and Eve. We all know how that story was told. Adam and Eve had everything they needed. They had beautiful land, garden, they had cattle, they had water. They actually had four rivers, if you want to be technical. They had fish in this river and they had just life. They even had trees in this garden that produced fruit that they can eat off of. See, God also gave them or gave mankind dominion over the earth. See, Adam and Eve had privilege that, didn't even, that they did not even ask for. They was also unaware of the special rights and their advantages that they had. They didn't even notice that they had a privilege or an advantage to eat when they wanted to. They didn't even notice that they had a special right to tame the cattle. They didn't even notice that they had a privilege to just live life. They had the advantage of the privilege to live life with no worries. They had the privilege to live life with no troubles. They were unaware that they had the privilege to live life with no doubts, no insecurities, no pain, no sorrow. They had no idea that they had all the privileges of life. Just think about that. Now, God gave them all these privileges except for one thing. They were not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God even told them that if they ate from this tree, they would certainly die. See, the tree of knowledge and good and evil looked so beautiful. It looked so tempting. Don't, don't get it twisted now. So did all the other trees <laughs> in this garden. Looked beautiful. But they was able to eat after all those trees, except for that one particular tree. And how many people know when you have privilege and you don't even realize you have privilege, when someone gives you the authority to do whatever you wanted to do, except for that one thing. And the fact that you can't do that one thing, you feel, well, if I'm privileged enough to have everything else, then maybe I should be privileged enough to have that one thing that they say no to. So, however, we all know how this story went. The serpent convinced Eve to eventually eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And when Eve decided to eat from this tree, Although she heard God say that she would certainly die, when she ate, she was still living. She didn't die. 
So she went and told Adam, you can eat from the tree. It's good. I didn't die. I just ate from it. Adam saw that she ate from the tree. And he ate as well. And he realized that he didn't die. But when they ate from the tree, this is when they started to cross over from being unaware of things to becoming aware of things. This is where they realized they were naked. They started to become aware of their privileges. What I'm saying is when you become aware of things, you start to change. You start to change your mindset. You start to change the way you talk. You start to change the way you dress. You start to change your act, your demeanor. Things start to change about you when you become aware or you gain knowledge of something. You now become aware of the fact that you are privileged. Or here goes that in interchangeable word, entitled to things. When one gives you their life, gives their life over, excuse me, to God, you're now privileged to God's love. What I'm saying is when you become aware of God and God's existence and you now made that conscious decision to say, I'm going to give up the old me. That's when you were privileged and unaware of it. You decided to let that old you die and now coming to awareness and now coming to the knowledge of God You decided to let that all you die. And once you did that, you was able to now reap the advantages and the special rights that are deserving to you. And you now get to reap that. Why? Because you made that conscious decision to serve God in spirit and in truth. You now made that conscious decision to love your fellow brothers and sisters. You now made that conscious decision to be the ambassador of Christ, however that may look like. So family, this morning, I want you to know that it is a good thing that you are in privilege. It is a good thing to have those special rights, those advantages, those immunities, and not be aware of it. Now you're probably saying, student clergy, why are you saying it's good to have those things and not be aware of it. It's good because then you won't misuse it. You won't treat people differently because you're unaware of the privileges that you have. However, it is better when you become or you come into the knowledge that you are privileged, that you are deserving of these special rights, that you are deserving of the advantages and the immunities that God wants to provide for you. So yes, it's good that you're unaware of the privileges, but it's even better when you realize that you are privileged 
that you are deserving of these things. But here's one thing I want to throw in your mind. I want you to think about. When you become aware of this knowledge and you become aware that you are privileged and you become aware that you are deserving of these advantages and these special rights and these immunities, you need to also be aware that there are expectations that follows this awareness, this knowledge of being privileged. In Micah, the sixth chapter in the eighth verse, God gives us principles or what I call expectations to live by. And those expectations are justice, kindness, and humility. To act justly is to treat people fairly and respectfully. Sounds like kind of like what we believe. You do not oppress or mistreat others. Sound like what we believe. You must show kindness and you do this by not only just helping the poor, not only just helping the homeless, not just by helping the hungry. You show kindness by checking in on your fellow brothers and sisters that you see daily. You show kindness by praying for others that you don't know simply because they need prayer. They ask for prayer. You don't murmur about it. You don't complain about it. You just be about it. That's showing kindness. And for humility, humility, when you walk humbly with your God, a person who walks humbly thinks it's not about them. However, it's all about God. A humble person don't think less of themselves, catch this, but thinks of themselves less. We got to start learning how to be selfishness. Don't be selfish. Don't always think it's all about you. Because sometimes we could fall into that category when we realize or come into the knowledge that we are privileged, we sometimes box out everybody else and become selfish. I deserve this because. I deserve this because of what I've done. I'm privileged because I go to church like I'm supposed to. I'm privileged because I'm out there feeding the hungry. No, we need to be humble. We need to think less of ourselves and more of God. Learn to start trusting God. Allow God to lead your path. Allow God to show you which way to go. Allow God to guide your footsteps. Pour into God and God will pour into you. Think less of yourself and more of God. In closing, strive to aim for that knowledge and become privileged. And remember what I said earlier, when you become privileged, therefore you can conduct yourself 
in a manner that is pleasing to God, that is thoughtful to man. See, your character speaks values. So it's okay to be unaware of the privileges you have. But I want you to think of how much better it will be if you can serve God, or how much better you can serve God when you come into the knowledge of being privileged. When you come into the knowledge that you have special rights, when you come into the knowledge that you have these advantages and these immunities, and don't even just stop there coming to the knowledge of being privileged, but that you are aware of the expectations on how to justly treat one another, how to be fair to your brother and sister, how to treat people with equal mutual respect, how we don't oppress one another. When you learn how to be kind, not just to the people of God, to everybody, even those that are unkind to you. And when you come to the knowledge of humility and you learn to walk humbly with God and think of yourself less but not less than. Think of how much better you can serve God in your full capacity in spirit and in truth when you become aware that you are privileged. Privilege versus privileged. Which one you'd rather be? That is the end of my message for today. Don't know who I've reached. Don't know why God gave me this message to share to you this morning, this evening, this afternoon. But I pray that this pierced somebody's heart. I pray this changed somebody's mind, their way of thinking, the way they go about doing things. Dear heart, if you didn't hear anything from this message this morning, I pray that you hear me when I say, it's good that you're unaware that you have privileges, but it's even better when you realize that you are privileged and you know the expectations behind. I say, I say, amen, so it is. And once again, dear hearts, thank you for at least signing on and listening to this message this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you decide to listen to this feed. So once again, we are not live today, but this has been pre-recorded. But please catch us back here at 11 a.m. on the first Sunday in September and the third Sunday in September. And we will be live those two Sundays. Thank you for joining. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate the time you spent with us. I appreciate the sharing. I appreciate the love. Please continue to share. Please continue to love. If you enjoyed this message and many other messages that we share here at Unity Fellowship Charleston, South Carolina on our first and third Sundays, and you want to be a blessing to the fellowship, you can do so by donating to our Cash App. Now, our Cash App is dollar sign favor by. That's F A V O R B Y. And you can be a blessing for the fellowship. 
Once again, dear hearts, thank you for the time. We love you because God loved us first. Be blessed. May God be with you throughout the day, throughout the week, until we see you again.